Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I thought I'd take a look at hobbies. Now, I don't know about you, but I've often been told how important it is to have a hobby. But what exactly is a hobby and how does it actually benefit us? Well, the easy way to define all this, a hobby is an activity that's done for enjoyment. These include things like collecting themed items. So for me, I collect fountain pens. Creative or artistic pursuits. Again, for me, I create these YouTube videos. Sports. Got me stumped there. I don't, I, I don't do any of those. Or other amusements. Now, other things for me. You know, yes, I like to watch some TV, but I love reading. Participation in a hobby. It often leads to increased skills, knowledge and self-confidence. And quite often, we find that we tie our core identities in part to the hobbies that we do. Hobbies, they bring us joy. They give us something to do with our leisure time. And they can provide an opportunity to learn new skills. Hobbies, they tend to follow trends in society. Think back to the 19th and 20th century. Stamp collecting, that was quite popular then. And that's just one example. Nowadays, it's things like video game playing, and that's becoming an increasingly popular hobby. There are three types of hobbyists. These are casual leisure. These are short-lived, pleasurable activities, and they need very little knowledge or preparation. Serious leisure. This, it's a more systematic pursuit of the hobby, and it gives a more substantial reward and a sense of accomplishment. This can include things like volunteering, maybe becoming an amateur in a specific area. And then there's project-based leisure. These, they're generally short-term, one-off projects, and they're very rewarding. One of the things I like is looking at the etymology. Where do words come from? How did they evolve over time? So how did we get the word hobby? If we go back to the 16th century, the word hobby was actually associated with a small horse or pony. This is what gives us the term hobby horse. The first documented use of the phrase hobby horse is actually from 1577 on a receipt issued in Reading in the UK. The term hobby horse, well that comes from the phrase tourney horse and this was something that was made out of wood or basket work and generally it had a fake head and a tail. It was designed to allow a child to mimic riding a horse. As the centuries progressed, these phrases became more closely associated with recreation and leisure. In the 17th century, hobbies, well, they were seen as childish pursuits. But in the 18th century, they began to be looked at with more respect. You may sometimes hear the phrase pastimes to refer to hobbies. This is because they are used to pass the time, hence pastimes. The cultural shift for hobbies really kicked in during the 18th and 19th centuries. As technology and production techniques evolved, people they began to have more leisure time, so they had more time to devote to hobbies. Now, I know it's a very general statement. You know, to my mind, people in the working classes, they were actually working longer hours, under more pressure, didn't have the time for leisure, though. So I think this is more a middle class upwards, certainly at the start, but it began to roll down as time went on. As more leisure time was made available, one of the prevailing thoughts was that working people may not spend their time doing worthwhile pursuits. It's thought that they would spend their time developing bad habits, things that were sensual or physical in nature, rather than good habits that built rationality and intellect. The print media it increasingly encouraged worthwhile hobbies and pursuits. The change in manufacturing techniques, they also made the material for hobbies cheaper, more affordable, more available. The manufacturers, they were also able to more quickly respond to changing demands as hobbies changed and evolved over time. In the 20th century, well, the types of hobbies, they changed substantially. At the start of the 20th century, Hobbies would include things like stamp collecting, knitting, painting, woodwork. They're just a few examples. Nowadays, the list includes things like watching TV. I enjoy doing that. Listening to music. Well, I enjoy doing that. And video games. Well, not so much. These later ones, they're interesting because 
there's a lot of people, they don't actually class them as hobbies because they don't give a sense of achievement at the end. I don't know, I, I partly agree with that, but they're also an enjoyable way to pass the time. A study in 2018, it used a series of surveys and the results, they classed the phrase hobby as being used to describe activities that include making or collecting objects, especially when done alone. The term amateur or hobbyist, that's often used interchangeably, but this can lead to some confusion and really it's best to think of them as two separate things. Amateurs, they tend to have the ethos and the practices of a professional practitioner of the activity. They're just doing it in the free time. Think about sports. You've got your weekend amateurs as well as the highly paid professionals and all of them have roughly the same rules and dedication. Hobbyists, they tend to participate in five main types of activity. These are collecting, making and tinkering, activity participation, sports and games, and the liberal arts. That's things like reading, listening to music. Finally, we've got the volunteers. They commit their time and their energy to various organizations. A large number of hobbies, they tend to be solo practices, but they may include things like club membership, organized sharing events, regular communication, and really getting in touch and interacting with other practitioners. Children, they're often enthusiastic for collecting things, for making and exploring, and they generally, they have the time to pursue them. I mean, this makes me think back to when my son was younger. He was obsessed with collecting pebbles, and everywhere we went, he would look for some of the nicest pebbles, and they'd be taken home and put on a shelf. Some of the main reasons to have a hobby, what they include, they make you more interesting. You've got experiences and stories that you can share with others. They can help reduce stress. You're doing something you enjoy. You get engaged with it. It helps you to develop new skills. These, they often take time and patience to develop. So it also helps with developing your patience. They are a good way to increase your social life. You're able to meet new people at club meetings, at exhibitions, well, even in the aisles of a shop where you buy your supplies. A hobby, it can help you to increase your confidence. As your skills and your knowledge grows, well, your confidence grows with it. This, it really comes out because as you get into your hobby, you can then start helping and teaching other people in the hobby. That's what I do with my fountain pens. I've got my fountain pen channel. I love making those videos. Certainly not an expert, but with every video, I learn more. And with the comments that people give me, I learn more. And this to me is one of the benefits of it. Hobbies, they also give you the opportunity to challenge your opinions and to gain new perspectives. As you get to know the other participants, well, they'll view things differently than you. And being able to discuss that openly in a supportive manner really helps you to grow personally as well. Studies in the 20th century, they've shown that there are benefits to people's mental health from pursuing hobbies. I find it a little bit meta. I'm using one of my hobbies to talk about hobbies. But I love being able to research the various topics that I use on this channel. They allow me to grow my knowledge. I love the comments. I love the interaction that I get on my YouTube channels. When I'm writing a script for this, learning new things, you know, I go to a number of different sources. I do my research. You know, I spend a lot of hours researching for each video. I then bring this all together and then condense it into a script, which I then record and edit the video, which then improves my video skills as well. After the video is shared, I enjoy that social engagement. I've said a number of times to me, really like comments on videos. So if you've got a comment about hobbies, why don't you drop a comment down below? Let's kickstart a conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.